All right, so today uh, we're at Kubo Plus. It's been almost, um, almost two weeks. Uh, we've been here and I'm sitting with uh, Gabriel, uh, who's been one of the teachers uh, accompanying the, um, the students here um, for the Kubo Plus uh, program initiative. Um, so I got to know you a little bit about the, the last two weeks, but um, the audience uh, will probably need to know a little bit, mo a little bit more about who you are. Uh, so yeah, can you introduce uh, yourself for uh, all of us? Yeah, you're, you already said it. I'm Gabriel. I'm a software developer and I work at a Bitcoin startup in Switzerland which is called Lipa, and uh, I am Swiss, so um, that's why I work for a Swiss startup, kind of makes sense. And um, yeah, I'm very interested in many aspects of Bitcoin, but uh, from a work point of view, I have to deal with the technical stuff mainly. And so I'm always trying to be up to date on what's happening in the space. Cool. Um, when did that start for you, Lipa? Uh, what you do with them? Uh, Lipa, not so long ago. I think it was May 2022, so a little bit more than a year. Um, and Lipa is also not so old. You know, they. When I joined, it feels like that was about when it really got big not not because of me of course but um before it was mainly the three co-founders and uh, that summer when when i also joined they started to uh, employ a lot more people and um, yeah starting to work with an investor as well and so on so um if you could explain to uh to the audience maybe what lipa does um is it a wallet is it uh specifically targeting um uh, group of people also what is it yeah so lipa is uh, has two products so far um, it has a point of sale solution which um, is already out there for about a year or something and this is uh, mainly used I mean it's used in Europe but mainly in the German speaking countries this is the market that we target as German natives, uh, it's a good market for us. And um, then it has another product, which uh, is a, a wallet, a lightning wallet. But this one is uh, very much just at the start of its evolution. We've released a beta version, but only for um, iOS so far, only for iPhones and uh, the android version is in the works and myself i have particularly worked on that lightning wallet and not so much on the point of sale so uh, there's a lot of a lot of work and a lot of thoughts that you need to put into a lightning wallet um what i can also say is that or should say is that these solutions they are both mobile based okay. so um we have a dashboard as well uh, on the desktop for for the point of sale solution, but we really focus on mobile development. So uh, a merchant, uh, because uh, as you said, it's uh, targeting a point of sale merchant um, businesses. So they would use it on their phone uh, pretty much. Yes, um, that was the initial idea. Like you would not need any hardware. You could uh, just use your regular phone and download an app. And that certainly was possible, although we've learned that somehow many people like to have a device for that specific purpose. Yeah. And so sometimes they would have used their old phones. Yeah. And to do that, they didn't want to do it on their personal phone. And so Learning from that, uh, we decided to also provide some device. Okay. So now we also have like a, like a cashier system yeah. okay. um, that runs on Android. And so that you can also download the app there. I mean, okay. the app is 
available for every Android device, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's actually something that I've heard multiple times that uh, for merchants, it's actually quite important to have like uh, some dedicated dedicated point of sale. They don't want to use um, uh, the, um, any phone or uh, or at least their personal one. Um, in my mind, there is, there is a lot of consideration that comes into making a wallet for a specific audience. Um, is that the thought process that went around when uh, building Lipa? Like uh, you would focus on one um, one market merchants because it's easier to do. Because sometimes I had the um, the discussions that uh, the wallet that works uh, work the most um, the best at least are the ones that are really focused on uh, targeting one audience at least do you yeah. do, would you would you agree with the with that statement I mean this has been a long journey for us yeah. uh, that is still ongoing what is exactly our um, market that we want to target um, certainly I've already said the German speaking uh, region is what we're most interested in so far um, but yeah, it's, it, we wanted to first like tackle a, a specific city and okay. Bitcoinize the city. And then we uh, thought like maybe more, we need to go on, uh, uh, with the Bitcoin communities that already exist and so on. And, um, yeah, it's, it has been very tricky, but one of the outcomes that we also had was that we, for at first, we just wanted to create a, a point of sale solution. And then we figured that we should kind of have like a package uh, of products where we like a whole ecosystem, right? Where we also have the users uh, on board with Lipa. And so that's why we decided to also develop a wallet. Mm -hmm. And um, like that, we think we have uh, better possibilities to engage with them both and bring yeah. them together, right? But um, nevertheless, of course, we want to stay true to the Bitcoin ethos and everything is interoperable yeah. and should stay that way. So at the point of sale, you can pay with whatever Lightning mm -hmm. wallet. It doesn't have to be the Lipa wallet, right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you've mentioned uh, the German-Swiss community a bit. Um, um, how would you uh, describe the German Swiss community? Because uh, with Liquid Bitcoin, we we're pretty uh, close to the French um, Swiss community. Um, but from what I understand, the um, the market is different, maybe for um, for uh, for the Swiss. Because in my mind, the Swiss is uh, are really involved in just Bitcoin in general. There are a lot of regulations that are kind of easier easier to deal with than uh, than the rest of Europe and um, but how would you describe the German Swiss uh, community compare compared to the rest of, uh, of, of your country right um, first of all I cannot compare very much with the French speaking part because I don't know this yeah. community so much but generally I would say the the Swiss uh, the German speaking part it has a, has had a very great community already for a long time. So um, even, you know, the, some of the very early builders, they worked at Google in Zurich. And so um, many people came out of there and wanted to push um, Bitcoin. And then um, there has been a lot of development going on in Switzerland. There was also very many projects around the, the, the wider cryptocurrency space, right? So um, that has been around for a long while. And um, more recently, we see that the regulations in Switzerland have helped many companies to do uh, European um, exchange, uh, a cryptocurrency exchange, and so we see basically, well, there is these, um, these uh, DCA apps, right, and there is a couple of them, and 
as far as I know, all of them are based in Switzerland, right? So uh, regulatories have been comparatively nice in Switzerland, also, uh, even though it's also a struggle, mm -hmm. but uh, it's better than the rest of Europe. And so um, many companies have been built in Switzerland or moved to Switzerland. And uh, that's that, but al also just the, the plebs, the, the regular people, I think they have been a strong community um, basically since the beginning. Um, and it's difficult to say why. Some people would argue that Swiss are pretty familiar with democratic systems and being able to give, uh, um, to voice their opinion. Um, I don't really know uh, what it is. Oh, there was something else I wanted to say. There was also the ETH. So uh, this is not Ethereum. This is a, what I'm speaking about. This is a, is a, a big um, uh, Swiss uh, university, uh, very like the the most the best one. Uh, people would often say in Switzerland. It's in French, they call it EPFL. EPFL. Uh, so, but it's the same thing, it's from the state. All right. And there were even many Bitcoin projects okay. uh, being done there. Uh, particularly Christian Decker uh, was uh, working there for a long time. So, yeah, long story short, I think a lot was happening in Switzerland and a lot more is to be expected. To be expected right? And we haven't even spoken about Lugano yet, which is in the Italian part, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. so yeah, a lot of different things happening and we can feel that all uh, those initiatives are not really connected. They're all like kind of acting independently. Like uh, what's happening in Lugano feels like uh, it's only happening there and it's not really spreading the same way in the rest of the country, which is different than the way that France work because all of our initiatives are well, at least we try to make them uh, whole yeah. like, uh, over the entire country. And I think this happens a lot in Switzerland in all kinds of topics, not only Bitcoin. It's just that the language border is mm. often bigger than the, the country border, right? So the Swiss German uh, people are very well connected often to the German Bitcoin community. Which is pretty big. Which is massive, yes. Uh, but not so much to the... Uh, French speaking Swiss community so yeah all right well uh, no that's definitely uh, it's definitely interesting the way uh, it shapes over there and uh, the way it's uh, really different from uh, all the places and just like you said um, there has been many uh, companies moving there but then um, I'm wondering what is the adoption when it comes to merchants uh, in the German part uh, would you say there are a lot of places where you can actually go and pay with Bitcoin? Well, um, we have quite some customers already. I'm sorry not to know the exact numbers, but there's a lot of companies willing to accept Bitcoin. Um, however, it's always a bit of a struggle, like how many people are then really going to uh, consume there and pay in Bitcoin. And these numbers, um, they vary a lot business but sometimes they are very low so we try to um, organize meetups around these spaces or whatever but um, yeah it is difficult so it's, it's like this uh, hen and egg problem right uh, you need to kind of kickstart uh, the the users and the businesses at the same time which is very hard and that's uh, yeah, what we've been trying to do, but um, yeah, so I think there's quite some businesses and the uh, tendency is definitely growing, but in the end, it's still a niche. Yeah. Uh, do, by the way, do you have offer any fiat conversion when p merchants are using the app or no? Um, yeah, so fiat conversion in the sense of the user pay in Bitcoin and the uh, the merchant can choose how we w how he would like to receive so that's an option. the the money in fiat or, or in bitcoin yes we we have that yeah right. um 
Yeah, to me personally though, uh, and this is not Lipa's opinion, this is my personal opinion, is I don't really see even the use case for that so much. For me, the merchants that are interested in Bitcoin and want to hold Bitcoin, those are the interesting merchants because if you want to receive fiat, but what want people to spend their Bitcoin, um, then it feels to me like you just want to grab attention from the Bitcoin community and live off of it. But if you really understood Bitcoin, then you would, hold, hold you would want to get the damn Bitcoin, right? So, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. So you, you, you said that when you, you joined Lipa in 2022, but you obviously been in the Bitcoin space for longer than that. Are there any other uh, initiative companies you've been involved with uh, uh, before Lipa? Yeah, so I was working at, before Lipa, I was working at a, um, a general um, open source software um, enterprise, I mean, like company. Um, we developed software for other people and with we would favor uh, to develop open source projects and this uh, company was called puzzle itc okay. it's it's based in in bern and so this this was definitely not a bitcoin startup it was uh, a bigger company but we somehow got some uh, funding within the company to experiment with uh, Bitcoin and particularly Lightning, and so um, I, yeah, I could gather some experience there, and uh, also through that, uh, um, through this company, I also worked for Relay, so I helped them particularly in the beginning with some deeper Bitcoin questions, basically. All right, so quite a lot. Um, how how did you um, how would you say you uh, acquired all the knowledge necessary to be uh, entering the Bitcoin space? How was your uh, your point of entry for you? Yeah, so basically hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes at these Bitcoin events, I meet people that are have an intelligence that's such beyond of my level, I feel like. So I'm the kind of guy who just has to put in the work and it's a very interesting topic. So I'm happy to do that, but it's also, yeah, sometimes very difficult. I mean, Bitcoin is a difficult topic and everybody is struggling with it to some degree. So I don't want to say other people don't do anything and just mm -hmm. get it for free, but yeah. Anyways, you asked me how I entered the space. Um, well, it was when I was working at yet another employer, um, also building software uh, back in the day. And um, we would always go have lunch together, me with my bosses. And one of the boss suddenly came up with this Bitcoin thing and would, would uh, he would always ask us, hey, sh should I invest in Bitcoin or should we invest in Bitcoin? And I was obviously uh, very smart. Uh, at least I felt at the time like this and told him, no, this is certainly a scam and, or a Ponzi scheme. Don't do it. <laughs> and so um, basically he wanted to, to get into it and I just thought like ah, this is something like um, it reminded me a lot of this game Second Life. Yeah. They had something called the Linden Dollar, which of course was inflated to death rather quickly. And I just thought like, oh yeah, digital money. Yeah, of course, this is going to be the same thing. And so, um, yeah, we, I, we had this discussion a lot and then he was so stubborn and bring it up again and again that I started to look into it and then I felt like oh th there's really a lot of thought go going into this and, and very smart things solutions have been developed and it uses cryptography in interesting ways and so on 
and so I figured that um, maybe I need to rethink and to look deeper into it particularly. So um, yeah, this, this was uh, basically how I got into the space. And then from there, I just digged and digged deeper. And I particularly also remember 2016, 17, I was studying in Finland. And in Finland, I had a lot of time because the university up there wasn't so strict with the schedule, but left you more time for yourself to study. And so I used a lot of this time to dig deeper into Bitcoin. And that's where I uh, yeah, basically um, learned the most probably in, in that year. Um, yeah, and so back in the day, back in the day that would mean uh, Andreas Antonopoulos was a very big name. Uh, mastering Bitcoin when it came out, I, I read it, of course, so this was massive and I could definitely recommend that st still to this day. And um, yeah, there was otherwise there was Bitcoin talk, yeah. but there was it, it was quite difficult back in the day compared to today, I would say there was not so much information out there or you at least needed to know how to to get to it. The, yeah. The, which is the difficulty because uh, everything, all the knowledge is uh, all over the internet or um, in people's head that you need to meet and talk with, and uh, which is really different from uh, anything else in academia where you uh, there is always some kind of path that is has been thought thought out for uh, people to uh, get to that really uh, high level knowledge, and uh, so you've been one of them. You were talking about the fact that you're. Uh, you're always impressed when you go to conferences and you have people that are like really good at what they do and uh, uh, that are quite impressive with um, their overall knowledge of Bitcoin. That's uh, I gotta say that's the way you make me feel when I'm here in uh, at Cubo because uh, I've I've uh, listened to you guys giving lectures to the students and uh, sharing everything that you know. You've particularly uh, taught the students about Lightning um, um, and. Uh, so it's quite a lot, and and then so you've put yourself in the shoes of um, uh, of a teacher now. So trying to get all of that uh, chaotic uh, information that you got over the years, and um, and kind of like funnel it in an efficient way, so you can uh, teach the twenty students that we have with us. How has this experience been um, for you, uh, formalizing? everything that you know in order to uh, teach some students uh, over the course of a few weeks? So first of all, I would uh, like to talk about what you described as like taking all the information I have and compile it into one good, uh, easy to understand thing. And sometimes you wonder why it doesn't do anybody, it doesn't do that. and then I could just consume that and it would be a lot easier. And the problem is that Bitcoin is really a living beast, right? So it, it's constantly, uh, ever, like it's in a constant evolution. And so as soon as you have gathered everything and presented it, there's already coming out new stuff and new thoughts that you need to integrate. So um, first of all, yeah, I just... Uh, thought about this while you were talking, but then um, the, about the general experience, um, it was very satisfying to me to, to share this knowledge. Um, <clears throat> it's what I was talking about was very complex. Sometimes it was a bit overwhelming for the students, I guess. Um, but yeah, they, they have generally been good students and asked questions. And so um, I was very, very happy to, for me, it's one of the most beautiful things uh, is to be able to share with people and to be able to help them. And particularly with these guys who come from a country that has had a very difficult past, if I can help them to get into a better future, then that makes me very happy.
Uh, did you have any um, similar experiences before Cubo Plus of uh, teaching? Well, definitely not in in that um, order of magnitude. I would say uh, I've been giving um, talks about some topics. Maybe, for example, once I gave a talk about Taproot for one hour or something. But then that's it, you know. But like uh, here, I had to uh, to basically have a, have talks about like or to teach about much more topics, and so it was just the scale was a lot bigger, and so it was quite a challenge for me to prepare all that because you really want to if you teach something you really want to understand the details right mm -hmm. because uh, you can only teach if you have really understood something and there might be questions uh, about things so even though i understood from basically almost all of the topics i spoke about i understood already before how these things more or less work I needed to go and dig deeper for every single topic to get the details right. So that was hard and a lot of preparation. So it was a, a bit of work for you as well. Uh, so it wasn't your first time in El Salvador. Um, you came here um, how long ago? Oh, I was here roughly one and a half year ago. One and a half year ago. Um, have you seen anything changed uh, since you uh, since you came back? Yeah, so I think generally the country is moving forward and the development is visible. So um, I see infrastructure getting better and just the conditions generally getting better for the country. However, the Bitcoin part, I don't feel like it has gotten stronger, but rather weaker. And um, I think, honestly, that's just like the Bitcoin cycles that just like affect everything. So it's just, uh, the truth of the matter is, is just that uh, people get more interested in Bitcoin when the price is higher. And we've had, yeah, we, we've had a pretty long and hard bear market. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the interest got a bit lost. But you can still uh, use Bitcoin if you want to. I mean, if you want to live the Bitcoin standard, you can do, still do it pretty easily here. And um, I'm pretty sure interest will pick up again soon. So, yeah, they probably Bitcoin bears are, can be very rough, can be very hard. So uh, probably it just shook some people up. Mm -hmm. What, what um, may happen is that when the price is going to go up again, uh, just a lot of people are going to come back running uh, and then asking uh, if they can exit Bitcoin, how are they going to do it? Mainly what we've been doing here is just to make sure that when ha that happens, uh, there is going to be a strong base of, uh, of uh, people um, who are going to be uh, ready to um, build solutions and, um, and accompany the people with that need. Um, Absolutely. I think that's the, the big part here. And it's not that the whole country has been converted into Bitcoiners, but there's definitely seeds that have been planted and it takes a while until they grow and they blossom but as we have worked with these young people um, we see that there's so much potential for the future here because some of them like it's the most important part for us is not even to educate them and give shove all the information down their throat right but it's to spark an interest yeah and we see that people are interested here uh, because they heard about it. And of course, in this country, everybody hears about Bitcoin a lot. And in, in other countries, that's just not so much the case. So I think this um, will, sh will still show to be very beneficial 
in the future. But for now, just like, I mean, the, what are we talking about, right? Those are maybe one person in a thousand people, but that's still a lot because not everybody is a software developer or, or, or works in this field, right? So that's why you, for now, you don't see that very well, but the effect will, will play out. I'm pretty positive about that. It's, um, but I think it also goes to show that everything here, when it comes to Bitcoin, is kind of made voluntarily. Like people are not forced to use it, which uh, I think the Bitcoin community as a whole can agree that is a good thing. We're not, uh, um, we not, we don't like they're not made to accept it uh, the next day, and uh, there is going to be some kind of like smooth transition, and people will uh, get uh, some solution when they feel uh, the time is right in order to uh, to to accept it. Um, how has the um, Kubo Plus uh, initiative lived up to your expectations. Um, I myself had expectations before I came, and then I discovered um, the students. I saw that it, there were, um, I guess, some uh, difficulties we had to uh, to accommodate with. Uh, what what is what is your opinion about? The, the program as a whole and things that you have observed that maybe you didn't expect before coming here and that you overcome in a way? Yeah, so first of all, this is the first of its kind, right? So um, and for that, I think it was extremely surprisingly well done. Um, I love like the the structure that we first we we taught them mm -hmm. about Bitcoin and now they have this hackathon where they can yeah. really do like do something hands on and use the knowledge that we gave them. Um, and of course, we are here to help them, so um, they're not being left alone. Um, so yeah, I don't even know what to say. I think it has been a pretty intense program for the students and as well for us, but uh, we've been doing um, something every day, even on, on Sunday we didn't do work, but we went to uh, hike on a, onto a volcano. And I think that was uh, a very good thing that we, you know, we live together, we eat together, we do everything together and not only classes and then we throw them back out so um, yeah that has been a very beautiful experience I think for all of us and um, yeah it, it also kind of showed them not only Bitcoin but also a bit of the community and how the people in the community are and so on and uh, how would you like um, like it like to see it evolve um, like what do you want to see for a uh, Cubo Plus and the students in uh, in in the future. Um, is there anything you you? What is your expectations? I'm gonna say for uh, after these two weeks are um, are over. So some guy had this idea, and yeah, this is really stolen now. But I yeah. thought it was a great idea. I think it was Alekos. He said um, this this should grow out of, of El Salvador to all of Central America. Mm -hmm. And what I would really like to see the next time is that not only uh, Salvadorians are in the program, but also that um, people from Costa Rica or uh, Panama or whatever, Guatemala, are joining the program and come to study here in El Salvador such that we can, you know, build these hops of uh, information everywhere in these countries and not just here. Yeah, sure. It would be uh, really great, I guess, to see that uh, people would actually uh, move around and uh, come from all over the world to just uh, get the best from uh, what's happening here. Because it's really been the best. Like it's been, I've been quite impressed personally with uh, the quality of everything that's been uh, offered here just in terms of just um, our life here, but also just uh, the, the teachers that were here and uh, the courses that were made, and uh, it's been uh, quite impressive. So 
yeah it's been uh it's been it's been really good i think uh i think it's been a, a blessing for a lot of us to uh, to experience that um anything you would want to uh leave us with um with um bitcoin or anything closely related to it Oof. um I would say who the whoever wasn't here yet should come check it out. It's a, it's an adventure. Uh, El Salvador and Bitcoin in El Salvador. And um, yeah, everybody should come and make their own image about this country. Um, and also, yeah, it's a, it's a bit different than what we're used to in Europe. So. Um, uh, you, you are, you know, it can be adventurous because, you know, like you do other things like driving in the back of a pickup truck and so on, uh, which can be quite fun. And uh, <laughs> and so the surfing and everything, it's, it has a lot to offer. And um, yeah. So, yeah, don't take our word for it, but uh, come and experience it for yourself. And uh, because... Yeah, it's always, uh, that's one of the reasons I came, because I saw that, I saw a lot of things about El Salvador, but then you're kind of like, is it really what's happening? I kind of make my uh, my own idea about it. Like, uh, I should see it for myself and make myself my, uh, my own opinions. Yeah, I think it's also like, also the the people are very interesting here because they they really went through hell for a lot of time. It, the country has been very, difficult for them uh, the situation that was here and now as they're getting out of it you they that shaped them right they are different but they uh they are also like um to me very humble and uh, and somehow very uh, disciplined in a way because they just want to make sure that this country is getting to a better place and away from the suffering and this is something very beautiful for me because I don't see that in my own country where basically things have been good for the last 80 years so right so um, nobody is trying like everybody is more relaxed and and just like lives life how it goes but there is not so much of a mission there as you can see here and so I find that quite beautiful. Well, on that, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, sharing a little bit of your experience. I think uh, yeah, you're, you're one of the great teachers here and uh, it was really uh, cool to chat with you just so people uh, get to know you but also get to know what LIPA does uh, because I've discovered it myself with you. And uh, I think um, yeah, it's a great product overall. So uh, go and check it out, LIPA. And, um, and Lipa.swiss. Lipa.swiss. So you heard it from the man. And um, yeah, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Alex.